we have seen the Rankine cycle and in the Rankine cycle we have the, the important components are the boiler, then we have steam turbine, condenser and the pump. In the boiler itself, in the boiler itself we have the in the steam turbine we have a nozzle. So what is the nozzle is the device used to accelerate the flow that is to increase the velocity and nozzle is simply con consists of a converging duct or diverging duct or both and it does not have a moving part so work done equals to zero. The length of nozzle is so small and the velocity of the fluid flowing through the nozzle is very large hence the residence times of the fluid is almost negligible and therefore we assume that no time is available for heat transfer. So practically heat transfer rate from the nozzle is almost equal to zero. So this figure demonstrates here a convergent nozzle. One represents inlet, two represents outlet. The flow is moving from high pressure to low pressure that is from section one to section two. The nozzle is a steady flow device so there is a no accumulation of a mass inside the nozzle. So dm by dt is always equals to zero and we know the law of conservation of mass not energy is m dot i equals to m dot e plus dm by dt this quantity is zero it means that m dot i is same as m dot e and there is a single input and single output so m dot is equals to constant and the m dot is the product of density into area into velocity so we can write rho 1 a 1 v 1 is equal to rho 2 a 2 v 2 and the density is the reciprocal of specific volume so we can write as a 1 v 1 by v 1 is equal to a2 v2 by small uh, lowercase v2 a1 is the area at inlet v1 is the velocity at inlet v1 is the specific volume at inlet a2 v2 and a v2 are the area velocity and the specific volume at outlet now i i suggested to remember this equation and this is a very useful equation to calculate the area or to calculate the mass flow rate now once we apply the steady flow energy equation for single input and single output we have Q plus H1 that is the rate of heat transfer from the system to surrounding H1 is the enthalpy at inlet half V1 square plus GZ1 equals to W plus H2 plus half V2 square plus GZ2 that is the work plus enthalpy plus kinetic energy plus potential energy. Now here in this case our assumption is the there is a steady flow and therefore dm by dt is zero. There is the isentropic expansion that is the heat transfer is zero and the changes in potential energy and uh, kinetic energy changes in potential energy are zero. So z1 is same as z2 so this is cancelled. There is no work done during the process so w is cancelled. So if we apply this assumption q will vanish w will be equals to zero z1 is same as z2 and what is left with us is so q is almost zero gz1 is gz2 is get cancelled and w is equals to zero so we get h1 plus half v1 square equal to h2 plus half v2 square practically the this velocity is around 1000 and this only 30 meter per second and if we square that quantity then the difference is very very small so practically we can say that v1 is very very less than v2 so what we left with h this value is equals to zero so what we left is h1 equals to h2 plus half v2 square and therefore we can solve for v2 and we get v2 equals to under root of h1 minus h2 h1 minus h2 is basically the enthalpy and remember in this equation you take it joules per kg in steam table the enthalpy is given in kilojoules so you have to multiply it here by 1000 then only you will get the velocity in 600 for 700 800 meter per second otherwise it will be wrong answer Now what is the our expansion isentropic expansion means so before the nozzle we have a boiler and then after the condenser after the steam turbine we have a condenser so what we can say the boiler is supplying the pressure and condenser is de de uh, maintaining the back pressure so expansion takes place from 1 to 2 this is a Molière diagram enthalpy versus entropy drop and in this one h1 is same as h2 because your enthalpy is constant. This is called as isentropic expansion process. This drop here is called as isentropic expansion drop and this is the theoretical drop. 
and this one is called as actual expansion drop 1 to 2 dash and this loss in enthalpy is basically because of the friction and therefore actual expansion curve PV to the power n this n is the coefficient of the index of expansion so value of h1 minus h2 dash is always less than h1 minus h2 and velocity is dependent on h1 minus h2 in actual case this drop is going to decrease so actual velocity will be less than the theoretical velocity now here comes the actual and theoretical so we defined to two terms one is delta hs that is the h1 minus h2 one we defined as delta actual that is h1 minus h2 dash and the ratio of this actual divided by isentropic is called as nozzle efficiency and is h1 minus h2 dash h1 minus h2 dash upon h1 minus h2 the actual velocity is then dependent on the theoretical velocity dependent on h1 minus h2 and the actual is dependent on h1 minus h2 dash so v theoretical is two times of delta hs and v2 actual is two times of delta actual we also know that the coefficient of velocity cv is defined as v actual upon v theoretical if we substitute for actual and theoretical using these two equations our tools will get cancelled and what is left is delta actual upon delta hs here is two is not printed so this definition is same as the nozzle efficiency so coefficient of velocity is always equals to the square root of nozzle efficiency or the nozzle efficiency is always equals to the square of velocity so these are the important terms with us nozzle efficiency equals to delta actual upon delta hs nozzle efficiency equal to cv square the theoretical velocity is under root of 2 times h1 minus h2 remember to multiply by 1000 actual velocity is under root of 2 times h1 minus h2 dash mass flow rate is given by a1 v1 by v1 a1 is the cross section area v1 is the velocity and this is specific volume the classification of nozzle to understand the classification of nozzle we will define first Mach number which is defined as the velocity of fluid upon the velocity of sound and this Mach number will control the design so if we have a conversion nozzle then normally we have a Mach number less than equals to 1 or what we can say that the conversion nozzle can expand maximum equals to Mach number equal to 1 and Mach number is the velocity of fluid upon velocity of sound so maximum velocity attained by the steam here will be equals to the velocity of sound if you want to increase this velocity then you have to go for conversion diversion nozzle so this conversion diversion nozzle so in the conversion nozzle you have to maintain the Mach number less than 1 at throat you can achieve maximum value equals to 1 that is the limiting value of this and then we have a portion having the increasing area that is called as divergent type of nozzle so this type of nozzle will respond if Mach number is less than 1 this type of nozzle will respond if we have Mach number greater than 1 together is called as convergent divergent nozzle and this one is called as convergent nozzle the limitation of convergent nozzle is Mach number, uh, Mach number equal to 1 so velocity of steam is same as the velocity of sound here Mach number there is no limitation of Mach number provided you maintain this Mach number less than 1 and this is Mach number equals to 1 so we can have Mach number any number here so if Mach number is greater than 1 the velocity of the fluid will increase and if the velocity of fluid increase the mass will increase and if the mass will increase the kinetic energy will increase and therefore the power develop will increase so normally convergent diversion nozzle are best suited as compared to conversion nozzle now if we have a conversion diversion nozzle and we have a Mach number is equal to 1 that is operating under the full throttle condition so for maximum discharge the throat pressure can be calculated as P2 by P1 which I represent as R and is given by 2 upon n plus 1 whole thing to the power n upon n minus 1 remember n is equals to 1.3 if your inlet condition is superheated steam and if this value is 1.135 for saturated steam that is dry and saturated steam and for any wet steam we can take this value is 1.035 plus 0.1 x if you substitute n equals to 1.3 for superheated steam we get r that is the critical pressure ratio equals to 0.5457 and if you substitute for saturated steam n equals to 1.135 we'll get r equals to 
0.5774 so we normally supply with p1 we normally supply with p3 and p2 you have to calculate depending upon the condition of inlet supply whether superheated whether dry saturated or whether wet steam use this ratio multiply with p1 you will get the throat pressure in the last one we are represent this is actual expansion and this is isentropic expansion and I said that there is a friction occurring so what is the effect of friction when the steam passes through the nozzle the friction occurs between the surface of nozzle and steam and whenever two surfaces are in contact and the steam is flowing over the surface the friction will develop and because of friction some energy is lost and hence exit velocity of steam is lower than theoretical so where this velocity is lost so this velocity is converted into heat and this friction results into the heat energy and this heat is added to the steam as the nozzle is insulated the steam cannot leave and therefore the heat is heat is absorbed by the steam itself and therefore what we observe is that the dryness fraction will improve so this is the effect of steam we'll repeat again the as the steam will pass through the nozzle there is a friction occurs and this friction results into the heat since the nozzle is insulated no heat can be transferred so this heat is given to the steam itself and therefore dryness fraction will improve this is internal reheating case so because of friction there is a loss of enthalpy and this loss of enthalpy is given as h2 dash minus h2 actual if there is no friction expansion takes place from 1 to 2 that is delta hx if friction takes place it is from 1 to 2 dash that is delta actual and delta hs is always less than delta actual by the difference equals to delta h loss is due to the friction hence nozzle efficiency is delta h a by delta hs is equals to h1 minus h2 dash upon h1 minus h2 now as far as the conversion diversion nozzle we normally come across three types of problem the first type of problem is that the entire flow is frictionless that is point number one that is inlet section two that is throat section three exit section they lie on a same vertical line representing s1 is equals to s2 equal to s3 that is a complete frictionless adiabatic flow which is called as asentropic flow in this case we can find out the velocity v2 is equals to under root of 2 times h1 minus h2 and when we calculate the velocity at exit we will take the difference of h1 minus h3 so v2 is given by difference of 1 to 2 and v3 is given as difference of 1 to 3 in the second scene the convergent portion is frictionless and the losses are taking place only divergent suppose the he, he says that there is a 10 percent loss it means that the efficiency is 90 percent but whatever the losses and efficiency are given there the efficiency term is always defined from 1 to 3 dash and 1 to 3 that is this definition as far as the v2 is concerned there is no change in equation this is same as h1 minus h2 because 1 to 2 is still isentropic flow so where the change is the curve will move from 2 to 3 dash because of friction because of losses hence the actual velocity 3 dash will be h1 minus h3 dash that is 2 times of h1 minus h3 dash